notches. So you still you you still hold on then to some of that LDS theology, stating that Jesus yeah, was Why the not? offspring of Elohim and uh, I heavenly still mother. Like, you know, it's whole thing. This is what I believe. Yeah. All the gods are like, yo, uh, this problem. <laughs> Word you're word. So you're talking about... Okay, keep yeah, going. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening. They're like, okay, cut it off. Uh, so we want bodies, yeah. So that's like the way to get it. It's like, but like, if we go there and do that, then we might just never get back. We all want to get back, bro. Right? So, we're like, let's just set one to like, get the scapegoat and whatever. This is on the road and all that. And, so, and then, then I was back there chilling, like, cool. And then just never probably get like back there like me too. And I was like, cool, let's go. And then we we're probably like chilling together until we came to her. We were like discussing, like, yeah, you know, it's cool down there. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. And then like God's like, okay, well, it's time, Kevin. And then now I'm here. Yeah, okay. So what if I told you that Jesus isn't real? Be like, uh, all right. Okay. You yeah. want to know, you want to know why? Yeah, tell me why Jesus isn't real. That Jesus, not Jesus. But the LDS version. Of oh, okay. Right. You don't have to tell me why that. Oh, so you so you don't believe you don't believe that story? I can say everything aside. Huh? I can say I could be a clean slate right now and just set everything aside. Okay, understood. So the Bible, what it says about Jesus is that he actually created all things. It says in Colossians chapter one on heaven and on earth. Yeah. Visible or invisible, whether oh, yeah. it be rulers, dominions, or authorities, all things were created through him. And then it says he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Yeah. Meaning that he created Lucifer. He's not the elder brother of Lucifer. Right, right, right. So he is actually El Shaddai, El Gabor, Almighty Yahweh. That's oh, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so do you believe that about Jesus, that yeah. he's the eternal God? Oh, yeah. The original. The original. Oh. Gotcha. So how do you think you have peace with God? Oh, just align my will with God's. What do you mean by that? Just like walk around and do my thing and if it doesn't feel right, do something else. Okay. So if it doesn't feel right? Yeah. See, I feel like you're holding on to a lot of LBS thoughts, right? I mean, they're in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's like, well, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel good, if I'm not feeling it in my heart, or my heart, I might not do it. But the Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, that our hearts are deceitful above all things. Right, uh, yeah. Desperately sick, we can know that. So your feelings don't lead you the right way. Yeah. We already know. Dude, there's people who say, I felt like I really need to kill that person, and I did that. Oh, yeah. Would you say that, oh, that's good, you followed your heart? I'd say uh, they followed something. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say, but that is that God? I, I don't know. I'm not going to say that. The Bible says it, though. Oh, then God said that. Then, yeah. So you, <laughs> you're funny, man. Dude, I'm serious. Like, nowadays, I'm just like, oh, if God says it, then cool. Yeah, the greatest commandment, right? Love the Lord with all your might, mind, and strength, yeah, yeah. right? But then love your neighbor as yourself. And it says true love doesn't wrong a neighbor, but it lays your life down yeah. for your friend. So Jesus comes and he says that he showed us in his death, burial, and resurrection yeah. that we're not to, just because we feel like it, to kill somebody. Instead, he gave himself up for sinners. Right. Right, because we're sinners. I'm a sinner. Yeah. You're a sinner. Wade's a sinner. Ryan's definitely a sinner. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> He's, a, a person He's a sitting sinner. sinner. But um, beard, I mean, the thing is, the beard of the is that we can't, have, we can't have peace with God unless yeah. God himself took our place on the cross. And so that's what happened. God himself came down died on the cross for my sins and then when I believe in him he accredits me his righteousness and took my sins on himself yeah right that's, yep. that's the gospel amen no, I truly that, believe that I was actually thinking okay. about that today like were you yeah I was thinking about like Jesus and then I was like yeah you know he is like he's the original God like the person yes well there's no others Isaiah 43 10 says before me there was no God born neither shall there be after me Isaiah 44, 6, I am the first, I am the last, beside me there is no God. Right. So, not just that he's the OG, there's no other God but God. Right. Right. Gotcha. I'm on board with that. Another one thing. Only one God. Because okay, this good. is really fun. Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one Lord. The funny thing about that, Deuteronomy is not concerned, but what it says is, it is the name Elohim and Jehovah. It says, right. The, the Jehovah, your Elohim, is one Jehovah. That's yeah. my input. Jesus, your Elohim, is one yeah. Jesus. No, I mean, like, they, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's what they believe anyway. They just don't know it, like, because that's what they teach. No, 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 they don't teach that. They, they teach Elohim and Jehovah are two separate beings. From the original. 
not from the original. There is no necessarily original. It's called the eternal progression of godhood. Oh, okay. So, you see what I mean, I, I, you're right. I do like sort of use my old old stuff. We gotta we gotta throw that Mormonism baggage away because it's a lie. Here's here's the reality. <laughs> throw it away. <laughs> here's the reality of of our of our state before yeah. God. It says that the Bible says that God made man upright, but He sought many devices. Man, it says it said in Genesis six that man's thoughts were continually evil upon the earth, and then a flood came and wiped them out. And then even beyond that, though, after we spread and we we uh, we were fruitful and multiplied, uh, continually, continually, man sought after his own devices. Still, God. Uh, spoke his word and man continued to uh, to, 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 to do what was uh, opposite of what God had yeah, commanded. Yeah. So, what so, right. so what's the, the incredible thing is when God speaks, when an eternal being that is holy and upright speaks, and what he commands is supposed to be followed. So, so like when my father used to say, Wade, go do this. And maybe I'd do it, maybe I wouldn't, maybe I'd have a, a kind of a disobedient attitude towards him. I'd, I'd do it. But when God speaks and he says, do this because he's eternal and he is just and he is holy, that requires for us to turn all attention to God and see what he has written and see what he has said. Yeah. And so the Bible makes it clear, though. It says in Romans chapter three that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're, we're now at enmity with God. In, in fact, it says... Those who are in the flesh, uh, those who are before Christ saved them, those who are in the flesh are at enmity with God, which means in a sense that God is our enemy and we are enemies with God. So we are enemies with God and it says that we're dead in our trespasses and sins and it's like being straight up dead at the bottom of the ocean. It's not, it's not like we just need someone to smack us across the face and be like, dude, get, get your act right. No, you need a resurrection. Right. You need to change. Jesus says that every careless uh, word that you speak, you will give an accounting for it on the day of judgment. He says that neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, none of them will inherit the kingdom of God. And, and the reality is that God is so holy and just, and he's given us his standard that when we fall short of it, if he is a good and holy judge, he will punish sinners. He must. If he is actually good, then, then that which is opposite, that which is bad, if he is good, he must punish it because he is perfect. He is perfect and holy in every way. And so that's where we're at a predicament then. Because if we are not holy and God cannot stand any unholiness, any wickedness in his presence, then that means that we deserve punishment. That's what's called his wrath. God is so holy and just he has what's something called his his wrath. He's so righteous, he's wrathful. It's like a it's like a judge in a small town. Someone in a small town has murdered and raped all these women, and he's and he's uh, standing before the judge. And people are just waiting for justice. You know, if someone if someone murdered my mother or my wife, I would seek to forgive them. I'd seek to give them the gospel. But at the end of the day, I would want. I would. We create. We're made to crave justice. What a and that's because we're made in the image of God. And one day he will bring justice to this whole world and he will bring his holy wrath. And all those who are sinners, who are not found in the righteousness of Christ, it says they will go to the fire that burn, uh, burns with a fire and brimstone. They will, they will dwell in fire and, and, and this perpetual uh, uh, burning forever where the worm dies not, where the fire is not quenched. They will go to eternal torment. Jesus says it. They will go to Gehenna. They will go to outer, outer darkness, which is not to be confused with Mormon outer darkness. This is hell and it's forever. And there's no chance for missionaries to come around and say, this is the truth. The, in Luke 16, we have the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And the rich man said, was in Hades. And he said, we have Lazarus just dip his finger in a bowl of cool water and bring it to me and let it touch my tongue because I am burning and I am burning forever. And Abraham said, Abraham said, there's a divide, there's a chasm fixed between us and one in which we, he cannot go across. And he said, please go warn my family. And that's kind of what's happening today is God has providentially 
allowed you to come to this corner today and to hear this message that you are headed straight to hell. You're oh. going to die yeah. without a hope if you don't turn to Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's if the good you, news. If, turn to Jesus so that's yeah. the good, that was the bad news. The, so the good news is, is that there is a way that God from all eternity, Jesus Christ, it says he tabernacled among us. He took on flesh. He dwelt among us and he lived a sinless and perfect life. The life that you and I could never live, bro, right? Right, right? I could never do that, ever, ever. In James, uh, in the book of James, it says, if you fail in one part of the law, if you disobey God once, you fail in it all. There's no hope for you. The wrath of God abides on you still, if, if that is you. And so we have to come to a place. What is your name again? Kevin. Kevin, you've got to come to a place where this is the day of salvation. You've got to turn from your old ways. You've got to turn from your current ways. You've got to cry out to God today and ask Him to save your life. You need a heart change. You need a heart transplant. You need God to take out that heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, it says. You need God to save you. So whatever that looks like, God, I have not believed you. I have not followed you my whole life. I need you to make me believe because I don't know if I, uh, you know, that was my prayer. Lord, I don't know if I truly believe. If this is real, if this word of God is true, and I'm going, and if there's a heaven and a hell, and I might go to hell, then I need you to make me believe all this stuff. And if you ask that prayer, if you beg God for that to save your life and to give you truth and to give you the Holy Spirit and to give you regeneration, He will do that. But you've got to do it. You've got to repent and turn to Christ. You've done it? Beg, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do it again. Okay. Don't yeah. stop begging. You've got to Here's come to God. faith. Uh, All right, cool. That's it. That's that doesn't seem very sincere, it doesn't, Kevin. It doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. Careful. Okay.